I'm annoyed. And one thing in particular that annoys me is when you ask questions on groups for beginners and you get answers like, don't bother, just do that, just buy this. Those um, answers, they have no educational value attached to them and often they are that wrong. One argument that often prompt this type of answer is when you are a beginner and you are asking about polar alignment for the Star Adventurer or any other mount and you ask, do I need to level the tripod, yes or no? So you have no clue and people tell you, no, don't bother, this is no important. When you are aligned, your, the level of your mount is not important. Okay, thank you very much. When you are aligned, this is true, but I am trying to get aligned. So this answer is getting, uh, it gets cause and effect backwards. The other thing is, oh, just don't bother, use sharp cup or this other electronic device to guide you through the polar alignment. Thank you very much again. This seems to be quite an overreaction to a simple problem that is polar align the Star Adventurer. The other type of question is, uh, don't bother, just take an application that shows you where Polaris should be on the reticle and put Polaris exactly at that position. Now, okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Um, one of such uh, um, application that is the favorite for these people asking something, uh, answering just get an app is Polar Scope Align Pro. You can see here that's the interface. And as you can see here, I have selected the um, reticle of the Star Adventurer. Now, either because they have been told that just don't bother, look where your yellow dot is on this interface, which is the position of Polaris, and put Polaris in that same position when you look through the polar scope. Okay, fine. But there is something else. If you go on the setting, you have reticle instruction. It tells you how you should use this reticle. So at first it shows you some uh, information about the interface and then goes into the procedure. You have a step zero, you have a step one where you have to point your mount due north and try to get Polaris into the field of view of the polar scope. And then we have step two. The first line of step two reads, to use this type of reticle, that is the one of the Star Adventurer by the way, you have to make sure, you have to make sure it is level, not the Star Adventurer per se, the reticle. So that means that you need to have one line exactly vertical, one line exactly horizontal. So you see already that it's not that easy. It's not just taking Polaris and put it wherever on your reticle. What you need is to have the reticle leveled so that you can define 0, 6, 3 and 9 o'clock for your reticle. So here on my iPad, I have simulated the uh, procedure of polar alignment with the Star Adventurer. And what you see here is a gray circle. The gray circle represents the field of view of your polar scope. And you see the reticle in the middle. So you may see that from the reticle here that I've sketched, I have removed any type of information that is not essential, is not important for polar alignment. That would be the numbers. Numbers you see in the reticle of the Star Adventurer mean nothing. The difference between the uh, long lines and short line is just a simple way to help you count degrees. There is no actual difference. All it matters is that you are able to define the zero, three, six and nine o'clock position for your reticle. So let's do a simple example. Here I have my, I have set my Star Adventurer and I have um, I've mount my my gear and uh, so if I'm looking if I'm moving around rotating the payload I'm rotating the polar scope this way and if I manipulate the wedge I move it this way up and down left and right so what I will see through the polar scope is simply stars one of which will be Polaris so I have to know where to put Polaris okay um, 
How do I do that? Well, I bring in my application that is uh, here. Uh, let's magnify a little bit. Okay, Polar Scope Align Pro is telling me that for my time of the day, date and location, Polaris should go here, where there is the yellow dot. Now, where is here? Here is exactly from 12 o'clock, we move to three o'clock and then we move 30 degrees past three o'clock that we meet the long line after the three o'clock and then another 30 degrees. So the position of polar is on the polar clock. Once you have defined zero, three, six and nine o'clock position, is at 30 degrees before 6 o'clock or 60 degree degrees after 3 o'clock if you are moving clockwise. So I take my polar scope now, I crouch down in the dark, try not to knock down the tripod, not to move it, to manipulate the wedge, still seeing through the polar scope and I have to guesstimate which position is the six o'clock so that I can put Polaris 30 degrees before it. So I'm start moving around and okay, maybe this mark here where I have Polaris now that is six o'clock. And so if each of these mark is 15 degrees apart, that will be 15 degrees before six o'clock. That will be 30 degrees before six o'clock. And great, so I have put Polaris exactly where the application is telling me, right? And so now the mount is aligned to a point in the sky that is the center of this reticle. Let it mark with a blue color that is there. So if I move away the reticle, you see where Polaris is and you see where the blue dot for the celestial pole is. Okay, so let's bring the reticle back and now the question is, are we sure about our vertical orientation? Did we pick the right vertical line? Is truly vertical. So here I have a crosshair. I know that this, the 0, 06 line is vertical. I know the 39 line is horizontal. So let's superpose it to the center of my reticle and see whether we pick the right spot and we didn't. You can see that this mark here that I mark in, uh, let's say in red, this is not at 12 o'clock, this is not at 6 o'clock, there is a difference. And so Polaris is not in the right position and the mount is not aligned to the polar scope. So where should the mount be aligned to? Let's put the reticle in an orientation that I know is uh, is such that they can define 0, 6, 3, and 9 clock clock position. You can see here the reticle has rotated, and now I can simply slide it, try to match it with my green crosshair to be as precise as possible. There. Now let's remove the crosshair. You see that Polaris is before. It is not 30 degrees from the uh, 6 o'clock position. It's less is maybe 25 or so. Why do you want to add error on top of error? Why you want to make your procedure not consistent just because you think I don't want to bother to level the tripod. Leveling the tripod takes literally 20 seconds and together with a feature that is often overlooked of the Star Adventure guarantees you to have the best possibility of polar alignment in a reliable, fast and consistent way every time you set up for doing astrophotography. We are out there, we bother to travel, to go in the field, to a darker location, we image for maybe five hours, we have travel maybe two hours, we cannot bother to spend 20 seconds to level the tripod. That that's completely insane to me. So how does leveling the tripod help you to know the orientation of your reticle so that you can put really Polaris in the 
position the app is telling you. So let's clean a bit this mess over here. So let's move away this guy, let's move the periscope out of the way, this we put it there, and let's clean a bit this mess here. Okay, so let's bring back in the center my polar scope. Now, there is a feature on the uh, Star Adventure, those graduation scale at the back of the instrument. The thing that people tell you, the other things people telling you, don't bother with those. Well, they are wrong, uh, in my opinion. Now, if you are in the comfort of your house, what you can do is to set up your tripod, level it to the ground, and then mount the Star Adventure on top of it, and um, point the polar scope at the edge of a distant building. Now use your graduation circle at the back of the Star Adventurer to set it to midnight, October 31st, with zero degrees offset from the local standard time meridian. If you don't, if you don't know what this means, you can refer to the video I will link in the description below. Now once you do that, your reticle will be exactly, or should be, otherwise it is not calibrated, should be looking exactly like this, with the zero at 12 o'clock, the six at six o'clock, the three at three o'clock, the nine at nine o'clock, and the zero six line exactly vertical. Now let me group this guy here so that when I move around stuff, they move together. Okay, so let's move the tribe, the, my, my polar scope there. Let's bring back my application. So now we know that we are in the field. What we do, we set the tripod, we level, we set the Star Adventure to October, midnight, October 31st, with zero offset from the local standard time meridian, wherever time of the night is, whatever date it is, wherever I am on Earth. So this is, becomes your go-to setting to begin your polar alignment procedure. Tripod leveled and the Star Adventure set to midnight, 31st October, in, uh, with zero degrees offset from the local standard time meridian. Once you do that, you know the 06 line is vertical to the ground, you have defined the zero is at 12 o'clock, the six is at six o'clock, and now you can count degrees and put precisely polaris where the app is telling you. Now there is another advantage to have, the other two advantages to have the, tri the tripod level. The first one is that when you manipulate the latitude base to move left and right, your reticle is moving left and right and not in some diagonal motion, which make tedious to go to, um, well, to, find, to put polaris in the right position. And the same way, when you go up and down with the altitude control, you are going really up and down. You are go not going to sideways, uh, diagonal motion. So it makes it easy to move the uh, reticle to meet Polaris. And also there is another stuff, another thing. Um, Polar Scope Align Pro allows you to input the amount of rotation you did in right ascension to frame your target. So that you can refine your uh, polar alignment as very last thing before starting imaging. So ensuring you have the best possible polar alignment. So here it goes what you should do in the field, despite whatever people are telling you. You go there, you set your tripod, you level it, take 20 seconds, you set the Star Adventurer to midnight, October 31st, zero offset of your local standard time meridian, other 20 seconds of time. So you have lost 40 seconds of time and you have your Star Adventurer set in the best configuration to polar line. Then put everything on top of your Star Adventurer, uh, your camera, your counterweight, uh, your red dot star finder, focus, connect everything, and then move to, your, to frame your target. When you move to frame your target, you are basically rotating the polar scope in one way or, or, or another, so maybe you end up with the polar scope rotated in this position. And uh, then what you do, you look where the mark for October 31st of, on your date scale 
where it goes to align on the time scale. Now, if your rotation was two hours, you can simply tap this icon here on your Polar Scope Align Pro application and input your two hours rotation. And uh, what you will get is this kind of screen here. You select the Star Adventure type reticle here, up here. You input here your amount of rotation and now your, this, your, your application is displaying the reticle oriented as it is in your reticle. So there is no guesswork involved to see whether you have kept your initial alignment or you have lost it and how you can refine it. So now you know that if your reticle has rotated 30 degrees and maybe your polaris end up to be here, that means that during everything you did, you have knocked the, uh, your gear out, your mount out of alignment. And so what you simply do, you look at your app and voila, you put polaris on the six and now you have aligned the mount precisely to the Northern Celestial Pole. And this is the very last thing you need to do you, before stop touching your equipment. Here is how leveling the tripod combined with setting the Star Adventure in a precise way using the uh, graduation scale at the back of the unit allows you to define precisely the orientation of your reticle. So to level your reticle and then to polar align precisely. Of course, you can able all, all of this, and this is fine if you have a very short focal length or if you are not trying to go long with the exposure. But again, it's guesswork. Why would you want to add guesswork on top of other type of errors that are there? Periodic error, the tolerance of the reticle itself. So things get complicated. And so, this is why you need to level the tripod with the Star Adventure. And so I hope I have clarified this with this video and uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.